Carrie Buck was a poor disabled woman who was pregnant. Upon finding out that Carrie was pregnant, the state ruled to force her to be involuntarily sterilized on the grounds that essentially poor disabled people should not be parents. The Supreme Court affirmed Virginia's right to forcibly sterilize people with disabilities. In the opinion, um, one of the justices wrote, three generations of imbeciles are enough. And it is the foundation of eugenics in the United States. This was discrimination and stigma, as well as violence against disabled bodies, all legitimized by the state. The mindset of eugenics, the mindset of what Buck v. Bell created, still exists. When I had my daughter, as soon as my OBGYN pulled her out, the anesthesiologist said to my doctor, so while you're down there, why don't you go ahead and tie her tubes? And I said, what? And he said, well, people like you don't need to have any more kids. And this was in 2013. Over 20 states have laws that allow the removal of a child from a parent with a disability solely on the basis of a parent's disability diagnosis. The Lurie Institute for Disability Policy is at the Heller School for Social Policy and Management. And we are a group of researchers who are committed to research that supports policies that support disabled people. Justice Louis Brandeis was the first Jewish justice of the Supreme Court, and Brandeis University is fortunate enough to honor his name in, in the university. In terms of Bakri Bell in particular, he sided with the ruling. This is something that came into the forefront when Rebecca Coakley uh, was here in 2021 um, as the uh, Richmond Distinguished Fellow. And she was giving a talk, and one of the questions at the end of the talk was about exactly this. Given um, that Justice Lewis Brandeis sided with the Buck v. Bell ruling, what can the university do to honor the legacy of Carrie Buck? I, you know, pulled it out of thin air. I was like, well, you could name a fellowship after Carrie Buck. And that was before I was at Ford. And then in coming to Ford and having a relationship with a CEO like Darren, I threw out the idea, what would it look like to actually create a fellowship, name it after a poor disabled woman, and focus it on the nexus of poverty, disability rights, and reproductive justice as part of our way of you know, working together collaboratively with Brandeis and unpacking both of our institutions' sorted history and perpetuating eugenics and perpetuating the idea that people like me shouldn't exist. And so here we are, two years later, doing exactly that. With the support of the Ford Foundation, we have established the Carrie Buck Distinguished Fellowship. So we're honoring Lori Bertram Roberts, and she is a disability activist, a reproductive justice activist. She is a queer, she's low income, she's a doula, and she has been doing foundational work on advancing the rights of uh, people with disabilities. It means I work around the right to parent, the right not to parent, the right to parent in safe and secure communities, with all of your basic needs met because that's a human right. The Mississippi Reproductive Freedom Fund kind of sits at the nexus of all of that work because we fund abortion, we give away diapers, we give away period supplies, we give away food, we help people when they're in crisis and they need parenting support. Lori is on the ground in Mississippi supporting women to make the choices that they need to make that are right for their families. It's about so much more than abortion. It's about providing cribs and diapers. It's about educating parents about their rights and interfacing with the child welfare system because we know parents with disabilities and parents of color interface disproportionately with the child welfare system. And when they do, they are much more likely to have their parental rights terminated. With inflation, our need for food baskets and um, just the amount of need at our free pantry, because our free pantry is open 24 seven, seven days a week, we can't even keep it stocked. Our average budget used to be about $1,500 to $2,000 a month for that, and now we're 
we can't even, I mean, it's 3,000, 4,000, and we can't keep up with that. I'm looking at what, what does the community need? And if that means we serve less people, but we serve people's full needs, then that's what we want to do. What would a perfect world be that the rights of disabled people are like the rights of everybody else? I don't want anyone to have an abortion they don't want, and I don't want anybody to give birth when they don't want to. I don't want anyone to go through a pregnancy loss unsupported, and I don't want anyone to have to parent unsupported. We need to be recognizing the people on the ground that are literally saving lives and saving the health of people in their community.